Today we're going to go over uh, a class called Those That Tremble at the Word. Those That Tremble at the Word. And I didn't know what I was going to teach about today because been, it's been a long day. But um, the Lord put it on my spirit as I was sitting in the barbershop of all places. And, uh, you know, just talking to those brothers in the barbershop about God and about what's going on. They were talking about... Um, What's going on over in, in Russia? And, and they were saying stuff like, uh, "Why they just want? Why America just won't leave that alone? Like why? Or why Russia won't just leave Ukraine alone and all that stuff like that?" And I posed the question. I said, "Any of y'all grew up around your grandmother?" And they said, "Yeah." I said, "Your grandmama Christian?" They said, "Yeah." I said, "How she say the world gonna end? Come by fire. The first time he came with water. Second time he'll come with fire." I said, "Okay, well, what has the capabilities on Earth to cause a fire that drastic? You understand?" And they all agreed, nuclear weapons. I said. There you go. That's why this is happening. It's all Bible prophecy, just to make it plain. Um, so with that being said, I want to come and do a class tonight. We won't be too long, Lord's will. Uh, we're already out uh, 30 minutes late. <laughs> so y'all bear with me. But uh, we had some things that we was trying to get done. So um, we're going to go over a class today, those that tremble at the word. Okay, we're going to start off with Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1. I'm going to show you very quickly that Everything on the planet Earth follow everything on the planet Earth other than humans follows God. Everything on this earth and in what the things that you can see and the things that you cannot see, they all bow down to God and follow God. From Satan all the way to to the birds that's flying and everything follows God. Everything serves God. Nothing does its own thing except us. That's why I named the class Those That Tremble at the Word. So we're going to Isaiah chapter 65. And I want to read verse 1. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I'm sorry, 66 and 1. Excuse me, I knew it ain't sound right. 66 and 1, that's what I wanted. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? So the Lord says heaven is his throne and uh, the earth is his footstool. I don't know how many of you have ever traveled before, but this planet that we live on is huge. We get on planes and we go to Africa, these different places, and it takes us 10, 11, 12 hours to fly on an aircraft, 30,000 feet in the air, moving at uh, outrageous speeds, speeds that you can't move on the ground. Like if you drove, if you tried to, if your car could get to the capability of the, uh, speed that an airplane is able to get, you'll be shooting across these streets. People be like, you crazy. How are you even able to go that fast? But that's up in the air, and it's a he real heavy machine, and it flies through the sky, and it still take you 13, 14, 15 hours to get to the other side of the earth. This place is huge that we living on, this, this planet that we living on, and there's other planets in this galaxy that are bigger than the earth because I think Mars is bigger than earth. Saturn is bigger than Earth. I'm talking about 15, 20, 30 times bigger than this place. And that ain't even including the sun. The sun way bigger than this place. And you mean to tell me God say this is his footstool? He rests his feet on this? You got to really think about how magnificent and almighty and powerful God is, man. The Earth is footstool. This big old planet we live on and we just humans. Now you got humans saying, oh, God ain't real. Nigga, you crazy. Something wrong with you. So like, yeah, that's a dude told me today. My old basketball coach. I'm talking to him today. He says, um, he said, yeah, there's a guy that I knew. He is a radioactive something, some type of scientist. I said, oh, okay. He said, yeah, he went to Jackson State. I said, okay. And he was just running down the other brother credentials. And I was like, that's real good. It's good to see brothers doing stuff like that. You know, we ain't just athletes. You know what I'm saying? We we smart. Then he goes into proceeds and said that this guy says he believes in the Big Bang Theory. And, I, and I, if I had a mic, I'd have dropped it. Like, what the? How are you a scientist and got this much intellect to go through college and pass all these rigorous courses? And in your mind, you think two rocks hit one another and created man and woman that is now able to reproduce children. That don't make no sense. Think about what you think about what you're saying. You're saying two rocks hit each other and that's how flowers bloomed. What has ever come from destruction? Two things hit each other. That's destruction. Life don't come from death. That makes no sense. But this is what. Our people, even in their uh, superiority or higher level of education, they still dumb as rocks. 
God said, this place is my footstool. Watch this, read verse two. Verse two, for all those things have my hand made. I made this, go ahead. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. You hear what God says? He said, look, that's why God ain't worried about the rich of our people. Because the rich of our people think they know more than him. Those that got Esau education think they know more than God. He said, look, I made all this. Ain't no two rocks smashed together and made nothing. You don't take the glory of God and give it to two meteors. Well, who made the meteors? Who made them? Where these two rocks come from? Because rocks are full of all kind of minerals. And where the minerals come from? Who thought to create that? Come on, you got to use your. I guess they they got a brain, but it's it's it's, it's doused in an American in the American flag. It's like somebody took their brain, wrapped it in an American flag, and dumped it in white supremacy. And they come out with a stain on it, and you can't get it out. That's why the Bible says, "And those things have been," saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. God looking for people that fear Him. You understand? Go to First um, Corinthians one. It just popped in my head, in verse twenty six, because it says, "But to this man will I look." This man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. Could you look up the word contrite for me? And we'll pull it up after the scripture in Corinthians. Read 1 Corinthians 1 26, man. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. Yes, sir. For ye see your calling, brethren. So you see your calling, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, mm -hmm. not many noble are called. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world. To confound the wise. That's why he said, to this man will I look. Those that are poor and of a contrite spirit. Because you got brothers that have real life jobs like carpentry. Brothers get on roofs and, and do stuff. And you might look down on that. It's like, man, that ain't no real job. You crazy? You know how hard it is to get up on a roof in 100 degree weather in Mississippi or anywhere in the south? And put a whole roof together on top of somebody's house? Come on, man. But that's the way our people look at, at, at our brothers that have what they call blue collar jobs yo he a blue collar he 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 the trash man or he a janitor or she she work at wherever restaurant or something like that so what god said them the ones he gonna choose the people that everybody looking down on they got an honest job trying to make a living them gonna be the one the lord gives the spirit and the understanding wisdom of this bible to and they gonna confound the td jakes and the creflo dollars and the ceos and the scientists they're gonna be confounded by us those that people look down upon. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Uh -huh. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Read. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You know what? This so heavy because God don't have to use nobody that has a lot of influence to teach this gospel. God don't need LeBron James to say we the Israelites. He don't need uh, Nick Cannon to say we the Israelites. He can use him if he want to, but he don't need to. God can take the dude that you despised in high school that was nothing, that you called a lame, and God can put the spirit on that brother, and he can become a bishop. He can become a deacon. He can become a mighty man and go all over the world and teach the scriptures and confound you who went to theology school. That's what God's saying. Because that man going to serve God because he done been through something. Our people don't serve God because many of them ain't never been through nothing. But when you don't really been down and out, you start realizing, I need God. You take the, uh, the, 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 the prowess off yourself and the, and the uh, Mac and the, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? And the honor off yourself. And you say, man, I need the Lord. I can't do this without God. I, I, done, I done been beat down too much. I, I'm tired of getting beat down. Okay, God, show me what you're trying to show me. That's the poor. That's the contrite. Could you look up the word contrite for me? Did you have it? Watch what it says. Contrite. Look at this. Could you read that, soldier? Yes, sir. Definition contrite. Mm -hmm. Feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. You hear that? When you got your money and you got your wealth, you ain't worried about showing sorrow or remorse for a sin or shortcoming. You don't care. Because in your mind, you think... God with me. 
I'm still straight because my bank account fat. Oh, but it's coming a time where you ain't going to even give a damn about that bank account. Because you, they gonna shut the power off because of these nuclear bombs that's coming, and you ain't gonna be able to access your money or your crypto or your forex. Yeah, you ain't gonna be able to cash in from Cash App that day. Then you gonna remember, damn, I need the chief things in life. I need the house to cover shame. I need my children and my wife to be healthy. I need food. I need warmth. I need shelter. I need clothes. I need the things that are needful for life. I don't need all this money in the bank. You trying to live it up now? Oh, you oh you gonna turn up now? When the world going in the war, that's when you want it. Come on, man. No. God, so I'm looking for those that tremble at my word. They read these words and their bones tremble because they're afraid of what I might do on this earth to them. Them the ones God gonna choose. And some of you little young brothers that want to be disrespectful to your parents, you young sisters want to disrespect your parents. Oh, you gonna get yours. Because a lot of you think this is a game. A lot of you, oh, I'm tired of being in the truth. I want to listen to Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti's an idiot. He don't know nothing. I want to listen to NBA Youngboy. But yet, NBA Youngboy in Clubhouse listening to the prophets. And you can come in the congregation and hear the prophets in person. But NBA Youngboy said, I'm trying to hear what these dudes talking about. It's some real stuff they're talking about. But you let, you're trying to follow him and he's trying to follow us. You sick. You better come back to God. Go back to the scripture, Isaiah 56. So the Lord said he's going to take the base things of the world and they're going to confound the wise. Things that are despised, people that, God, people that, people that other people despise, God going to use those men and women to be a light to the entire planet Earth on what God really means when he say, keep my commandments and live. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. For all those things have my hand made. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, mm -hmm. even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. Remember what contrite means. It means to show remorse for a shortcoming or a sin. God only wants those that's going, when they fall into some type of sin, they're afraid. They constantly pick themselves up. You say, you know what, Lord? Hey, Lord, forgive me. I apologize. I, my mind wasn't right. I wasn't thinking right. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did that. Them the ones the Lord going to choose that he going to raise up. Go ahead. And trembleth at my word. And tremble when they hear God's word. Go ahead. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abomination. So the Lord said, he that killeth an ox, this is going into when we used to sacrifice. He said, he that killeth the ox, it's like you killed a man. You can't be forgiven for killing a man. It says, he that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. You can sacrifice a dog and get an atonement for the Lord. Then it says, and he that offered an oblation as if he offered swine blood. The Lord was not accepting uh, unclean animals as an atonement for sin. But he said, but that's how the people are that don't have that poor and contrite spirit. You come to God and you ask for forgiveness. I'm not forgiving you because you're not contrite. You don't really care. You're doing it because... It's uh, uh, required because at that time, animal sacrifice was required. Right? And it says, yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. You happy to do wickedness. And the Lord said he's going he gonna to see you about that. Now watch this. Read. I also will choose their delusions uh -huh. and will bring their fears upon them. Mm. Because, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delight of not. The, the, oh, man. Sometimes when I think about the Lord sitting on his throne and I, I be asking myself, is he, think, is he looking at me saying, I'm going to give him two more years and I'm going to take him out of here. That, 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 that worries me. That bothers me constantly. I'm always thinking about like, hey, man, I got to make sure I'm walking right because the Lord could have decreed in 2017 that he was only going to give me 12 years in the truth. Nine, seven, six months. You don't know. That's why you always have to be humble and you always have to fear the Lord. Don't play with God. He, he meditate terrors. He the king. The Bible says he's the king of terrors. You have to be fearful of that thing. That's why I said those that tremble at my word. When they hear the word of God, they tremble because they know it's true and they believe it. Now, it says he's going to choose the delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Think about that. God said, you know what? 
They've been doing much evil behind closed doors, and nobody in the congregation knows it. One day, I'm going to have them come in the congregation and say, you know what? I think we can have more than one wife. I think I'm sovereign, too. I don't need no driver's license. I don't need no passport. I don't need none of that. I don't need none of the white man's identification. You understand? It's my right. And if he pulled me over, I'm going to just keep my hands on the wheel and just spew out all this rhetoric about all these rights I got. The white man don't care nothing about your rights. All he got to do is say, oh, he reached for a gun. You dead. What you going to do in front of your daughters? That's what they did to Philando Castile. He said, sir, I got a firearm in here. All I'm doing is just going to reach for my wallet. It's right here, in here. I'm not grabbing my firearm, sir. I'm not grabbing my firearm. But, no, <laughs> ah, killed him right there in front of his girl and his, and his baby. That baby is destroyed now. I hope you understand that. Unless she come across this truth, all praises. But she's going to have nightmares forever about her daddy being killed in front of her. God can choose your delusions. He can take you out this truth anytime he wants to. That's what he do. Because man think they smarter. He like, look, the earth, my footstool, that same earth. You fly, you know how you fly, if you ever, you ever flew before? You fly and you look out the window. You be like, man, that's some beautiful stuff God made. He's like, yeah, 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 that's why I dust my feet off at. This beautiful earth. God said, yeah, 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 that's why I dust the mud off my boots when I'm ready. Because it's beneath me. So we can't never get too high like we just all... Uh, high and mighty Nah God will break you down Real quick He said he'll choose Your delusion He'll make you Become an Egyptologist You ain't know nothing About Egypt Before you came in this truth He'll have you run Across a video And next thing You'll come up in here With the damn Half ponytail Outside your head You got long dreads You'll show your whole head Ball with the half ponytail Like they were doing What's name Wearing a skirt Talking about uh, uh, What's up Ox Otmos Ock Notten. We be like, man, get this dude out of here. He done bugged the hell out. I don't know what happened to him. The Lord took his spirit. For real. That's why it says he will bring fears upon you. Keep reading. Verse uh, 4. Read or 4 again. Verse 4. Yep. I also will choose their delusions. Yep. And will bring their fears upon them. Read. Because when I called, none did answer. When I called to try to get you to repent, you wouldn't do it. Read. When I spake. They did not hear. And when I was telling you in the Bible, repent or die, you said to hell with that. Read. But they did evil. But what? But they did evil. You stayed in your sin. Go ahead. Before mine eyes. And I'm watching everything you're doing. Go ahead. And chose that in which I delight of not. And you know I hated you eating that, but you ate it anyway. You know she off limits because she's not yours. She's another man's. And you went after it anyway. God said, okay, bet. You doing what I delight not, I'm going to choose your delusion. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. But you that tremble at his word. Hear what he's saying. Go ahead. Your brethren that hated you. Your brothers that hated this word that didn't want to listen to me. Go ahead. That cast you out for my name's sake. And they told you, get on away from around here with that Bible. I don't want to hear that. Go ahead. Say it. Let the Lord be glorified. Uh-huh. But he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. You hear what that word say? He going to appear to your joy, but they going to be ashamed. They going to be looking like, you. <laughs> that nigga told me. You know what the dude used to work with us? Mm. We used to see out there on the corner all the time that we told the boss on. Boss talked. Questioning him because he rebuking us. You went and so we went and told boss that he was in a hate group and he hated white people, which is a lie. We do not hate white people. You understand? Yeah, yeah. That same dude. Why he get the one? Why he get to go up there in that chariot? That's like a spaceship. How come he get to go up there? Why? Why he get? Why he get a chance to go up there? And we got to stay down here. I don't understand. Oh damn! He told us this was gonna happen. That's what they got. So I'm telling us how a lot of your family, a lot of your friends, they hate God's word. I'm telling you. They despise it. Soon as you mention it, they cringe. Here you go. Yeah, here I go. The world about to come to an end. Yeah, here I go. I'm on the phone with my dad the other day. He's going to tell my little brother got a girlfriend. He's 16. I said, bro, what are you doing? Man, she come from a good family. I said, daddy, you crazy as hell. I'm, I want to snap. I got But I got to heat my dad. I got to be respectful. I said, dad, did I come from a good family? He said, yeah. I said, did I have a girl pregnant at 19? He said, yeah. I said, there you go. Did you tell me not to, 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 to go out here and do certain things? He said, yeah. I said, did I do it? He said, yeah. I said, there you go. Stop saying, that's, that's that naive Christianity. Oh, she come from a real good family. Oh, her daddy a pastor. And her mama's a doctor. And her little brother a lawyer. And then such, such, such. And so, meanwhile, my little brother got her in the pretzel over here in the damn corner in the gym. I'm telling you what happened. I've been in high school. You used to go up behind the bleachers in the school and make out. And do it, guys, no, whatever. You understand? Because why? Because our parents didn't really watch us like that. They was just like, man, go on, do your thing, man. Ain't no going to prom. 
You know what I did on prom when I was 16? I stayed over my wife's house. I was in her mama's house, sleep in her, in her bed with the door open. Her mama passed by. Let me stay over there. My mama let me stay over there. And let me stay in such and such house tonight. Yeah, you good. What? I couldn't believe it. I was like, you for real? They're like, yeah, you, yeah, you go ahead and just, you know, be careful. What that mean? Don't get her pregnant. That's what that mean. I know y'all going to do something. What protection? That's what that mean. So I'm trying to tell him this. He like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. I don't want to hear that. You did it. I said, okay. Yeah, I did it. And I ended up pregnant. I ended up getting her pregnant. Then my little sister did it. And she ended up getting pregnant. 19 years old, my little sister walk up in there. She's 16 years old. She walk up in there. She, 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 <laughs> she thick. She come up in that joint with some tight ass pants on, thighs this wide. I said, hey, daddy, you better do something about that. I'm telling you. She walking up in this joint looking, all right, now. Nah. I'm telling these dudes, all these dudes in the gym, they neck broke. They start watching the game. They look at her. I see them nudging each other. I, and I looked over my dad. I said, bro, you got, you got to tell us to stop wearing that. He gave me the stank eye. He gave me the. He was so mad that I brought that up. I said, man, I told you in the Bible, it said Deuteronomy 20, 25, women ain't supposed to wear pants. I'm, I'm whispering this to him while my little brother out there playing. Man, he got so mad at me. Two years later, senior high school, pregnant. You want to know what the hell we talking about? We just niggas. You know what I'm saying? Your son a nigga. But anyway, uh, the Bible says those that uh, when he shall appear to your joy, they're going to be ashamed. Go to Hebrews 10, 31. So those that, that tremble at God's word, that's what we're getting into tonight. Hebrews 10, 31. Start at 30. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. For we know him that have said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. The Lord going to judge his people. Go ahead. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. It's a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Be afraid. Be very afraid. That's what he's saying. Go from there. Go to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Mm -hmm. I kill mm. and I make alive. Read. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You know what that means? The Bible says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Meaning Christ don't even have no say so against the Lord. Christ does what God says. He say nobody stepping up against me. When I go, when I give out the decree, it cannot be stopped. You understand? Well, you might say, well, didn't he stop animal sacrifice? That was, all, that was never meant to stay around. It was temporary. It was a shadow of good things to come. That's why he told Abraham, in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Meaning all the Israelites scattered throughout the world going to be blessed through your seed, which was Christ. It was already prophesied before he even instituted animal sacrifice that Christ was coming. When you read Genesis 3.15, Christ in there, you don't have to read it because that's deep. When you read Genesis 3.15, where it says, shall bruise his head and thou shall bruise his heel. That's talking about Christ. Christ's been around. So the whole, oh, yeah, man, well, what about animal sacrifice? The Bible contradicts itself. No, it does not. Before the animal sacrifice was even given, it was already prophesied that a savior would come to this earth to save the world from the wickedness that was going to come upon it. So miss us with that lie. Okay? So now, it says, I, even I am he, and there's no God with me. I kill and I make alive. Anybody on this planet earth, you know what's crazy? If somebody survived a heart attack, we say, oh, thank you. But ain't God good? Won't he do it? Uh, but God. That's what Chris is saying now. But God. But when somebody die, you say, that's the devil. That don't make no sense. Have you never read the Bible? God says, I kill and I make alive. If anybody lives, if a breath enters into any soul, some kids are born stillborn. That's the Lord. That's why when stuff like this happened to us, we can't get worried. We can't get down. Yeah, it hurt. But that was God's will for that soul to not to come into the earth because he is the one that makes alive. If he choose not to bring a soul in this earth, it's something evil that's going to happen on this earth that was going to happen to that soul that God said, I can't let that soul enter into this earth. Because if I let that soul enter this earth, it's going to get hit by a bus at nine. It's going to fall off, a, be walking and fall off a balcony like that little girl the other day in Murrah that jumped off the bridge. How you know God ain't saved that soul from that? He said, no, nah, I'm going to keep this spirit with me this time. 
Because if I send it down there, some evil going to happen. And it's going to get corrupted and not follow my word. You'll see that soul again. So don't get yourself, get worried. God in control of all this. And that's easier said than done. I understand. Because it hurt. But you got to believe these words. You have to tremble at the word of God. And when somebody die, that's of the Lord. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Right? Uh, read again. See now that I, even I am he, mm -hmm. and there is no God with me. Go ahead. I kill and I make alive. So God kills and God makes alive. Read. I wound. God wounds. And I heal. And God heals. So you got back eight. God going to heal it. But he the one wounded you. Why he wound you? Something he wants you to learn. You understand? Anytime something happens, the Lord wants you to learn something. He wounded you. But guess what? He going to heal you too in his due time. Our people depressed out here, God did that. Why? He wants them to be brought down to a lower state so they'll think upon him. Because the only time we're thinking about God is when we're going through something. Then we start saying, oh, God, Jesus, help me. The biggest, strongest thug out here in the streets whooping everybody. Soon as he, soon them, them uh, doors closed, he like the dude on Shawshank Redemption. I ain't supposed to be here. I want my mama. Because he get broke all the way down. He realized, oh, damn, it's real. All that thug stuff I was talking, that hard stuff I was talking outside. Yeah, it's real now when them doors slam and I see real thugs, real killers. You understand? So the Bible says, I wound, I heal. Read. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. This is what the white man has deceived us into thinking that he going to be able to deliver us out of God's hand. God said, keep my commandments in order to reach eternal life. The white man said, you ain't got to keep no commandment, baby. <laughs> Just believe in me. I got you. Yeah, we're going to get you some underground bunkers. We're going to get you all kind of stuff to save you from that destruction. When that destruction come, I got you. You know, just believe on me. I'm God. And you sit up like, yeah, 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 yeah. You God. Yeah, you God, Mr. White Man. And a lot of our people are going to die following him. White supremacy. Now give me Psalm 6, 8, and 20. So when we hear these words, brothers and sisters, we're supposed to be in fear. Supposed to be in fear. Don't know earth lead. Don't know soul lead is earth Without the Lord, don't no soul enter into this earth without the Lord. He in control of everything. And when he make his decision, it's a wrap. When he say, oh, no, nah, he done. You done. The angels say, yes, sir. And they activate and they do what they're supposed to do. I'm telling you. People say, well, maybe they can talk Vladimir Putin off the ledge. No, you cannot. God done put it on that demon's head. Say, hey, look, man, bomb Ukraine now. He said, oh, just, I don't know why, but I woke up this morning. I want to bomb Ukraine. Clink. God made him do that. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 20. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Mm -hmm. And unto God, the Lord belong the issues from death. Listen to what it says. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto God, the Lord belong the issues from death. That's some heavy stuff. You got to meditate on that. So when the Lord said, you know what? I'm sick of these people. I'm about to flood this whole planet. Everybody got to go. Except Noah and his three sons and their wives. Y'all done found grace in my sight. Because Noah was righteous and so was his household. But the rest of these evil, wicked, nasty demons, all oh, y'all got to go. I'm sick of y'all. I'm going to start over with them four. Or uh, yeah, them four families. But Noah didn't have no more kids. So I'm going to start with these three men. And out of these three men, going to come everybody on the planet Earth. That's what he's saying. To God, the issues of the issues that come from death, the Lord is in control of that thing. Right? Go to uh, Isaiah 13, verse 1. So the Bible tells us that in these last days, we're supposed to fear God. Don't fear man. Man got a lot of stuff they can try to do to you. But at the end of the day, Nobody can kill you. Nobody can harm you. Nobody can wound you without the Lord allowing it. They don't, can't nobody do nothing on their own accord. The Father is in control. Just remember that. Isaiah 13. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 1. Yes, sir. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Mm -hmm. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. That's the Bible. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Mm -hmm. Shake the hand. That's why when we be out there teaching, we can't control our hands. People say, I mean, y'all threatening us. Y'all throwing up Illuminati sound. No, dummy. The Bible say we're supposed to shake the hand. And when I shake the hand, I might throw this up. I might be talking to do that. So what? That, oh, that's Illuminati? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we service. Get the hell out of here, man. Negroes, we up here teaching a sister, sis, you got kids? Y'all got six kids. By how many men? Six different men. But I want to learn about God. And we teaching her about God. But because a brother do this one time, man, he's making a point and he do this. They say, see, Illuminati. What? 
The sister going through pure hell on earth and we teaching her to repent and stop opening her legs for wicked Negroes out here in the street so she can get her husband to help her raise her children. And you say, oh, but I saw that little symbol you threw up though. You looking for evil. There's nothing pure. The scripture says to the pure, all things are pure. But to the unbelieving and the defiled, it, wait, get it, Titus 1. I'm sorry, I got to read it. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Oh, yeah, y'all throwing up Illuminati signs. I knew y'all was the devil. Nate! It's Nate's fault. Disrespecting the bishop, calling him out his name. Titus 1 and uh, 15. Watch what this say. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 15. Yep. Unto the pure, all things are pure. To the pure, all things are pure. Meaning what? I get an example. I'm going to show y'all something. Because some brothers and sisters may not pay attention to these type of things. But sometimes you will do something nice for a person and you don't want nothing. It's just the spirit of charity. God put the spirit of charity on you. You call a person, man, look, I want to help you out, man. Anything you need, I got you. But because they defiled, why was watch this? Keep reading. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Them that are defiled and unbelieving ain't nothing pure. It don't matter what good you do. They say, she ain't really mean that anyway. He didn't really mean that. He didn't really want to help me. He did that because of such and such and such and such or whatever kind of figment of imagination they have in their mind is because they defiled but to the peer they're gonna say man i so appreciate you man you, hey good looking out bro good looking out sis i appreciate that you ain't have to do that thank you you understand that's what the bible is telling you so when we go out on the street and we teach and brothers is looking for us to throw a, a gang sign up <laughs> i knew that i knew iuic was rolling 60s what they were purple i mean blue what the hell we were purple blue and red well, purple, what, what make blue Yellow and green. So we would have to be yellow and green to be rolling 60s if you want to use. I mean, what the hell? These brothers bugging out. So you can't do nothing good in certain people's eyes. That's why we can't let it vex us. So let's go back to Isaiah 13. I just wanted to prove that point. Their conscience is defiled. Read that. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2. Yep. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Teach the Bible. Exalt the voice unto them. Speak up loud. Shake the hand. Shake the hand when you're teaching. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. So that they'll go into the gates of the nobles and say, there's some dudes out there teaching the Bible. They out here talking about America going to get destroyed through thermonuclear fire. They told me that I'm a whore for having six men that I'm rotating right now. They, they told me that... Uh, the end of the world coming and I need to repent or God going to judge me or that God don't love all nations. That's what they out here telling me. They go to the, the nobles, the judges and teach and do that thing. That's what happened in the book of Acts. When you go to Acts 18, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I got to pull this. The Bible talks somebody with those that tremble at his word. Let's go to Acts 18 real quick. Let's start at 10. Watch this. Acts 18 and 10. I'm show you an example of that scripture. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 10. For I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. So the Lord telling Paul, I got much people in this city. Ain't nobody going to hurt you. Watch this. And he continued there a year and six months. So he stayed there for 18 months. Go ahead. Teaching the word of God among and them. And he taught the word of God there. Read. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, uh -huh. the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. So these wicked, evil Negroes hated Paul so much for what he was teaching. They brought him to the judgment seat. Meaning what? They brought him to the nobles. He out there teaching stuff that we ain't supposed to be doing. He out here teaching against Caesar. Lying. Lying. He teaching against such and such. Lying just like they do to us. Oh, they say they're going to hurt me. What? Why we say that? We, you, uh, Officer, we got the camera right here. We can run it back. But they still make us leave. Make no sense. But the Bible said they're going to do that. That's what they did to Paul. Go ahead. Saying, this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. So they were saying, look, he teaching people to worship God contrary to the laws of God or animal sacrifice to be in particular go ahead and when paul was uh, was now about to open his mouth he about to say something go ahead galio said unto the jews if it were a matter of wrong or wicked or wicked lewdness oh ye jews reason with that i should bear with you but if it be a question of words and names and of your law look ye to it for i will be no judge of such matters and he drave them from the judgment seat you know what's interesting about this this white man didn't want to have nothing to do with judgment according to the laws of God. He said, man, look, if it was y'all broke the Roman law or it was some wicked lewdness, I might listen to it. But if you're talking about names like Jesus Christ, I don't know who the hell that is. Or your law, y'all see to that, ain't got nothing to do with that. What does this prove? Christ didn't die for all nations. Nor will all nations hear God's word and keep his commandments. But notice you, 
they was going to the gates of the nobles to go against the prophets. Same thing today, because we back on the earth. All praise to the Lord. So go back to Isaiah 13. Those that tremble at the word, when these things happen, they're going to already know. The Bible said that was going to happen. They did the same thing to the prophets. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. So the sanctified ones is the prophets and the mighty ones are the angels. God says, I have commanded my sanctified ones to teach. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that what? Even them that rejoice in my highness. And those angels rejoice in God's highness. Highness. God got angels that just worship him. They just do whatever he tell them to do. They don't break no commandment. He tell them to do something, they do it. He tell them to go off with your head. It's off with your head. If he say save, if he tell hey, save her from drowning, you get saved from drowning. You on your way down about to drown on your last breath and then somehow all of a sudden your, your arms just know to swim all of a sudden. You just start doing, you ever see somebody that can't swim, but somehow they're able to stay afloat by fighting. The Lord will save that soul just like that. I mean, when I was a kid, I had jumped in the, in the deep end. No, my little brother, excuse me, my little brother, had jumped in the deep end and we was all on this end with our back turned. And somehow my homeboy was just so happened to look up and he seen my little brother. And he dove in there and saved him. You know, it's like quick. It happened so fast. He was lifting him up out the water. And I was like, man, thank God. He was because he was supposed to die. He was like four years old. He was real little too back then. And he fell in that water in the deep end and wasn't none of us paying attention. Somehow my boy just happened to see him and dove in there and got him. I was like, dang, that was, a, you know, even back then, I was like, that was of God because he's supposed to be dead. We're supposed to be having his funeral. You know what I'm saying? So the Bible is telling you the, our, the angels rejoice in God's highness. They're going to do whatever God says. You're the one that break God's commandments. You're the one that tell God, I'm still going to watch what I want to watch. I don't give a damn what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to eat this. You know what I'm saying? That's the only, we the only ones that do that. Go ahead. Verse 4, yep. the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. So the Bible said the Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts for of the battle. That word mustereth meaning God is the one that's doing all, pulling all the string behind closed door. You wonder, well, why this happened? Or well, why that happened? God said, this is me. I'm playing chess right now. And I'm winning. You think you win it. But I'm winning. I'm setting you up for the kill. You ever play chess? You play chess? I played a couple of times, and I suck at it, by the way. But I'm, I'm, I'm up here thinking like, oh, I'm about to get. And then brother come out know a checkmate. I'm like, what? we just started playing. What you talking about checkmate? How many moves? You and he's like, yeah, see this right here, right here. And then this is I'm like, damn, you were setting me up the whole time, huh? He's like, yeah. All money ain't good money. You play dominoes. You start, ah, give me 10. Ah, give me 15. Dude, setting you up. He's going to lock the board on you. And next thing you know, you got to give him 55. And he's just looking at it like, told you not to get all that money. You see what I'm saying? You're like, damn, I'm going to set up. God setting up the nations, brothers and sisters. God is setting up the nations. He's setting up this white man, and it's going to be a beautiful finale. It's going to be a beautiful finale where he take his children up out of here as he destroying these nations. You just have to believe the words of God. Okay? Uh... Give me that MS, MSN, MSN.com, U.S. News, MSN.com. It's an article. Let me show you something. Ukraine's, uh, read that. Ukraine's top diplomat tells the United Nations a full-blown war with Russia would be the end of the world order as we know it. Yeah, that will be the end of the world order as we know it. They understand. Read that little bottom part up under there, up under his, the picture. Go back up a little bit so we can see the picture of the demon. Go down. It ain't going to fit. What? Zoom out a little bit so we can see. Yeah, there we go. All right. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Ukrainian foreign minister Dimitro Kaliba Kul speaks at the General Assembly 58 plenary, plenary meeting in New York on February 23rd, 2022. So that was yesterday. Go ahead. On the Russian, on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So go down. So let's read this. Ukraine's top. Ukraine's top diplomat issued a grave warning to the United Nations on Wednesday. Foreign Minister Dimitro Kaliba said full-blown war with Russia will be the end of the world order. He urged the UN and the international community to impose swift, concrete, 
and resolute actions. Uh-huh. Ukraine's foreign minister told the United Nations on Wednesday that a full-blown war with Russia would spell the end of the world order. Go ahead. The beginning of a large-scale war in Ukraine will be the end of the world order as we knew it. Foreign Minister Dimitra Kaliba told the U- UN General Assembly in New York and later shared on Ukraine's government website. Mm-hmm. He added, if Russia does not set it, does not get a severe, swift, and decisive response now, they would that this will mean a total bankruptcy of the international security system and international institutions, which are tasked with maintaining the global security order. You hear this? He's like, look, if they if they get away with what they're trying to do, it's going to call bank cause uh, go back. It's going to cause total bankruptcy of the international security system and international institutions which are tasked with maintaining the global security order. If we allow them to do this and if we don't retaliate swiftly, it's going to bankrupt the security system. We're not going to be able to secure any nation at that time because of all our resources going to be plunged into trying to stop them from destroying Ukraine. That's what he's saying. But the Bible says, read that again in, in Isaiah 13 and 4. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, mm-hmm. a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Mm-hmm. The Lord, the Lord of hosts, must with the hosts of the battle. So they in there arguing, cussing, yelling. We need to do this. We need to do that. <laughs> the Lord is saying, look, I'm in the middle of that thing. I'm the one pulling all the strings. I'm the one that's proposing ideas. I'm the one that's using certain spirits to whisper in the ear and say, hey, tell them we're going to bankrupt. You know what I'm saying? The most high doing all that. Go to Putin shake, Putin shakes world. And say Putin shakes world. It's a news break. Soldier John posted it uh, at 104, 1.05 p.m. today, I think. Yep, 1.05 p.m. today. You see that? It's a news break. It says, Putin shakes world. I'm telling you, these nations don't give a damn. They finna go to war. Read that. Putin shakes world. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin Putin invaded Ukraine. Hey, real quick. Go to the the actual website so we can see the whole. There you go. There you go. All right, here we go. Putin shakes world. Russian President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, including attacking the capital, Kaviv, in an overnight barrage that was swift, broad, and ruthless. Mm. The attack was exactly in line with President Biden's di- dire forecast. He ain't know nothing. The Lord did. Well, he ain't even on my nerve. Oh, yeah, he, he predicted it. He ain't predict nothing. The Bible predicted Go ahead. Why it matters. The world woke to a new era of global upheaval. Mm. Two sovereign nations are in a... Con- conventional war in Europe for the first time since World War II, Mm. with huge ramifications for the power dynamics of Russia and the superpowers, the U.S. and China. Somebody got to do something. Go ahead. What's happening? Russian forces were confirmed on Thursday to have crossed the Ukrainian border by land, air, and sea from Russia, Belarus, and Crimea. Belarus. Belarus and Crimea. Bombardments rained down on cities across Ukraine, and a ground offense was launched in the east. Mm. The Russian military said it was targeting military installations and air bases. But dozens of civilian casualties have been reported and images on social media show thousands of Ukrainians attempting to flee. Hey, stop that. Oh, bring, bring that down real quick. So earlier today, you, you can drop that. Earlier today, I was talking. We're going to bring it back. I was talking to some um, <laughs> some brothers. He was like, but they can't do that, man. I just don't believe. I said, brother. He was like, well, he said, why they, he said, I don't understand. You know how many people going to die? I said, you think the white man give a damn about killing folks? He killed all your brothers, the Native American Indians, and then put the rest of them on reservations, and then told himself that I got three, I got one ninety-sixth of a Indian blood, therefore I need to have half of that casino. And said, I'm a $5 Indian. I'm going to pay $5 to make myself an Indian too. You know how wicked that is? I'm going to take the land from you, move you onto a reservation, and then I'm going to come on the reservation because I'm poor white trash and say, I deserve some of these benefits too. I got a little Indian in me. Come on, man. You think he really care about killing people? They created the coronavirus. Then they gave you a, 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 a mosquito bite that's killing folks too. And they want you to get it four times. They done added it up to four boosters. They yeah, get the shot. Now get a booster of the shot. Now get another booster. Then get one more booster. And you know what? There's another strand coming out, so I'm sad to say you're probably going to need to come and get another booster. You're looking like, dang, I ain't had this many shots in my shoulder ever in my life. 
That's what they doing. So you, I, I, that just baffles me. Black folks sleep. I don't understand why they would do such a thing. It's just, wow. God. Well, what they do to your ancestors when they brought us over here as slaves? Did they kill any of us? Any tree? I'm somewhere talking. And you know, women, when, I be, when we be teaching, I be noticing women's spirits. I can always notice the sister sitting over in the corner. I always notice if they agree or they don't agree. If they watching you while you teach, they agree. If they look to the, to the side and they, that means they don't agree. So I'm looking out the corner of my eye. This sister, she really getting engaged because I'm telling you, a lot, the most I put on the spirit, a lot of our women to just submit to what the man is saying, especially when it's truth. So a lot of our sisters in his word, they're going to believe. A lot more sisters are going to believe than men. Watch. That's why the Lord said, I just need 144,000 because a lot of these dudes don't want to believe this truth. But a lot of these sisters, honestly, they coming in in droves. The, the women's side always fill up more than the men's side. You understand? There's a reason for that because they need leadership. But the Bible is telling us all these things that you see going on with Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden and Kim Jong-un and all the, the European Union. God behind all that. We reading on the page thousands of years ago what's happening now in today's time. That don't make you scared? How, the, this got too much accuracy. It don't never miss. That should make you fearful. That should make you want to keep God's laws and keep his commandments. All right, go back to the article real quick. I'm going to finish this off. Uh, Ukraine's emergency services. Ukraine's emergency services reported that, that attacks were launched against 10 regions, including Kaviv, according to the New York Times. U.S. officials believe Russia is targeting airports in an attempt to secure the skies for a large-scale ground invasion. So they're going so basically they're gonna destroy all the planes and everything, the the airports, so they can't have no runway to fly from. So the, all the fighting gonna have to be on the ground, and then it's gonna be all out war. It ain't nothing you gonna be able to do. Go ahead. They gonna control the air and the, and the, and the land. Go ahead. A CNN reporter live on air captured Russian airborne forces taking control of Antonov. Airport located near Kaviv. I think it's Kaiv. Kaiv. Go ahead. Ukraine's government has imposed martial law and ordered citizens to take shelter. You hear this? This martial law out there. You can't leave your house out there. You got to stay in the house. It's real. Go ahead. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russian forces are attempting to seize control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And, and I saw an article earlier that they did take over their nuclear power plant. You saw that too? Go ahead. Kaiv Mayor Vitaly. Kliskov, Kliskov, Klisk, whatever. <laughs> Impose an overnight curfew in Ukraine's capital. So you can't leave the house. Go ahead. Residents must stay home from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. local time. Mm. As of earlier this morning, 40 Ukrainian servicemen and dozens of civilians have died in the attacks, according to Ukraine ambassador to the U.S. Ox Oxna Mar Markova. Mm. Ukraine's health minister, Viktor Lashko, said he said that at least 57 Ukrainians have been killed and 169 more wounded. That's just the beginning, y'all. Go ahead. President Biden on Thursday condemned Russia for attacking Ukraine and announced export controls and now and new sanctions to limit Russia's ability to do business in dollars, euros, pounds, and yen to be part of the global economy. Obviously, he don't give a damn about this no more. You know? All right. It says... That they it says they put sanctions to limit Russia's ability to do business in dollars, euros, pounds, yen to be a part of the global economy. Obviously, he doesn't care. He ain't worried about no money. He rich. Vladimir Putin. Let me tell y'all something about him. He a gangster. He real gangster. He ride around Russia with his shirt off, with thugs in the back seat, with AK forty seven shooting in the sky. He don't give a damn. This dude is not a regular president. He don't care. He don't care about how you perceive him. He a thug. You see how he was walking when we saw that video? He was like, I wish these niggas would. <laughs> what you said? Biden. <laughs> Flinching that Biden. He don't give a damn. He don't care. He ain't care about Donald Trump either. He just knew Donald Trump would press the button. Donald Trump crazy. He be like, say what, what you said, Putin? What that was you said? I got my finger right here. I'm grazing the top of it. I will press this button. Play with it. But but uh, Joe Biden said, let's take away some euros and some cents and some dollars for him. He rich. They don't care. They know. Give me Revelation 12 and 12. Let me show you how this white man's mentality is today. Because y'all think it's a game. Some of you think it's a game. Watch this. Revelation 12 and 10. 12. Re Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Yep. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead, watch and, this. And of the sea. And on the sea. And in the sea. Go ahead. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he have knoweth. Excuse me. Because he knoweth that he have half but a short time. You ever see? Uh. Uh. This is use a sports analogy. Somebody down. They about fifty points. They know they finna lose. This game about to be over. I'm finna just chunk it from half court. I don't give a. Let me see that joint. Everybody throwing up shots. You don't care because you know it's over. You understand? Brother, brother gave me an analogy that Deacon Asaph got, gave, and it was perfect. He said, the Lord employed Satan, and he employed him all these years. Then one day, him and the angels and Christ called Satan into the, to the, to the boardroom and said, uh, have a seat right there at the end of the table. Yeah, man, we're going to have to let you go. It's, um, it's been fun. Uh, you've done everything that we've asked of you, but uh, we're seeking new management, so we're going to fire your ass. And Satan, like a nigga, say, man, the hell with that. Start knocking over stuff, knocking laptop down, kicking over cubicles. He mad as hell. And anybody in his way, he finna just take out with him. That's what the Bible say. The so-called white man know his end is coming. So he don't care about no money. He done had all the money. He's like, look, if I die, all y'all dying too. <laughs> I'm killing everybody. Because that's the spirit on him. It's the spirit of a, of a disgruntled woman. If I can't have him, you can't. Ain't nobody have you. I'm taking him out. Taking him out, and I'm going out too. You, you see that happen. Brothers, they, the, a woman said, I'm moving on. I'm done with you. Just leave me alone. He'll kill her, the boyfriend, and then he'll turn the gun on himself. That's what the devil doing right now. That's what the so-called white man doing right now. He don't care about no damn euros. The Bible said what? Read it again. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, uh -huh. and ye that dwell in them. Mm -hmm. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. He know that he have a short time. He ain't got much time left. So he not worried about the things you worried about. You trying to twerk and I can't wait to get, to, I can't wait till I get me a little bit of my income tax, man, so I can do such and such and such and such. He like, nah. I'm going to destroy the whole planet. Ain't no more income tax. Telling you. That's his mindset. He don't care nothing about nothing. Neither would you if you knew your rulership was over. Right? Give me uh, verse 5 in Isaiah 13. We ain't finished it. So I'm just, we going over these scriptures just to show you just to continue to fear the Lord. Not man. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on around us, y'all. We understand that. But your fear has to lie in the Father. It has to because he's the one that's doing this. Right? Come on. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation mm. to destroy the whole land. So the Lord, so this is how you know it ain't talking about ancient Babylon because ancient Babylon wasn't destroyed, the entire land. So the Bible says they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. That's what's coming to this place right here. Go ahead. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It's on its way. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Go ahead. Therefore, shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Everybody's heart going to melt. This, nobody is going to be able to stand in this day and not be in fear. Everybody going to be scared. That's how bad it's going to get. Everybody's going to be afraid. Like, watch this. Show me that, that Facebook video. It's a Facebook watch video I posted. It's a Facebook watch video that I, I posted. Let me see on the screen before you before they see it. Is there any way I can see it before they see it? Just to make sure that it's the right one? Yes, sir. Oh, praises. Let me see that, vi that video real quick. Yep, that's the one. That is the one. It's two of them, though. Let me see the other one. What the other one look like? Okay, not that one. Yeah, play this one for me. Yep, play that. Watch this. Cause some of you, some of you ain't playing. Some of you think it's a game. Make it full screen if you can, please. There you go. Play that. You ready? To play it. Wait, we can't see it. We can't see it. Go back. We can't see it. Я не бачу. Ой, 
Давай, давай. Игорь! Давай. Игорь! Побежали, побежали. Давай, давай, давай. давай. Подвал. Да, все тапочки. Что ты делаешь? Все, давай. Все, давай. Все, давай. Y'all seen that, right? Let's show it again. Watch that plane. See that plane coming in the corner? Look at that. Watch how it fly through it. Look at that. Yeah, it oh. They weren't scared when they were eating no pork, though. They weren't scared to oppress God's people having hatred for Negroes. But now everybody's scared. The whole earth is going to be afraid. This ain't no game. This ain't no joke. The Lord ain't playing. Uh, yeah, read that script for me. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. The Lord is a man of war. The Bible said the Lord is a man of war. Go ahead. The Lord is his name. The, the Lord is his name. The Lord is a man of war. God love war. What you see going on right now, the Lord love it. That's what he do. That's what I do. I have Negroes and, and Edomites and all these different nations thinking that they actually doing something. They're going to realize what you living on is my footstool. That's where I lay my feet at. I'm going to show you how I can just muster up the hope. I can control your minds. I can make people do things that they won't even want to do. Don't press that button. Don't press that button. What you doing? Don't press that button. Don't press that button. I'm looking like, I don't know what's going on with my hand. I can't control it. Ah! Press the button. You know what I'm saying? I can't control my hand. I got to press it. I don't know what it is. It's so pretty, pretty and red. You understand? And they press it. And it's all hell break loose. God do that. Go ahead, Psalms 119 and 20, 120. So we're supposed to tremble at God's word, y'all. We're supposed to be afraid of the Lord. It's, this should put fear in us. It's about to get real. You ain't never heard no nuclear bomb go off. Some of you that may have been in the military, you may have been at war before, and you know the sign of them bombs and that ring that they keep in your ear. That ring don't go away. That ring stay there for a while. Some of us have never, I don't know if you have been hit by something, and you had that ring in your ear, you, keep, you hear that ring, you understand? That's what's going to happen with the nuclear bombs. And then the nuclear bombs got radioactive waves that come from it. That's going to kill people. After those that don't die in the destruction, the radioactive waves going to kill them. Mm. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 120. Yep. My flesh trembleth for the fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. So God is telling us through uh, the spirit of Christ is in the uh, forefather King David. He says, my flesh trembleth for the fear of thee. King David knew what the Lord is capable of. The Lord showed him all these things. He knew, oh man, God, I know how God get down. He don't play. Y'all think he play. You understand? When I mean say that, I mean mankind. Mankind think God playing. He ain't playing. And all our ancestors knew it. That's why Habakkuk said, man, I hope I'm dead when that day come. Because it's going to get real. Big Cree had a song like that. I pray I don't be here when it all go down. He was in the spirit. He didn't know he was in the spirit. But that's what Habakkuk said. Habakkuk said, yo, I hope I'm dead. I don't want to be living when that happened. I hope I'm dead and in the grave. And I'm one of the ones that get resurrected because it's going to get real. We're supposed to fear God. Now, the Bible says that King David trembled for the fear of the Lord and was afraid of thy judgment. Because you go to James 2, in the, James, the second chapter, in the 19th verse. Because not only did King David and select men on this earth fear the Lord, watch who else fear God. James 2. In verse 19. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 2, and verse 19. Yes, sir. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. Mm -hmm. The devils also believe and tremble. You hear this? It said the devils also believe and tremble. That's not a parable. Yeah, that ain't a, you know, somebody might say, oh, man, that's a parable. That's what a Christian would say because a Christian don't fear God. They say, oh, man, that's a parable. He's talking about, no, he's talking about literal devils, literal, literal demons. When they see Christ, they tremble go from there go to the book of uh matthew 8 and verse 28 watch this the book of matthew chapter 8 and verse 28 and when he was come to the other side into the country of the gergesenes there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way watch this and behold they cried they cried out saying what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? You hear what the devil said? They said, are you here to torment us before the time? It ain't time yet. We still got time. We ain't supposed to, the, the, the lake of fire ain't came yet. We ain't supposed to be down here in this lake of fire. Why are you messing with us? Leave us alone, Jesus. Let us have a little bit more time. Come on, you know how a kid be like, come on, mom, just five more minutes, man. 
Mama said, you better be in here by them, leash, them street lights. It's time for dinner. You be like, man, come on. Now? And I, right, bro, I got to go, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how, the, that's how these devils are when they see Christ. They're like, man, yeah, we got to go. You understand? Watch this. Keep reading. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. Go ahead. So the devils besought him, saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. That word suffer translates to allow. Well, if you're going to take us out of these men, at least allow us to go into the swine. Let us, let us do something. You know what I'm saying? They, asked, they had to have Christ's permission. Keep reading. And he said unto them, go. Christ gave him permission. Like, yeah, you can leave him, but you can go in the swine, but get up out of them, though. That's what I'm saying. These, if you believe the Bible, if you tremble at his word, you believe what we read. This ain't no fairy tale. Christ co control unclean spirits. He allowed them to do whatever, whatever he wants them to do, they're allowed to do. When he say, no, nah, you can't go on him, you can't do that, they can't do it. They cannot do it. That's why we must tremble at God's word, right? Go to Psalms 104, and I want you to read 31 through 32. Start at 1, and then skip down to 31. Psalms chapter 104. The book of Psalms chapter 104 and verse 1. Yep. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. You hear that? It said, bless the Lord, O my soul. O oh Lord, my God, thou art very great. Now, skip down to 31. Verse 31. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He look up on the earth and it trembleth. He touch of the hills and they smoke. It say he look on the earth and it tremble. This whole earth will shake if God just set his eyes on it. You know how dad look at you like, you already know, like, yeah, it about that time. <laughs> I'm going to holler at y'all. Daddy, and daddy didn't gave me that look, man. I'm out. You already know. You understand? Read it again. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He touched the hills, and they smoke. Mm -hmm. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Read. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Read. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, mm. and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. He said, said, he said, let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. King David understood. If the Lord want to turn it up, he can turn it up. I be thinking about sometimes like the stuff we be going through because we go through a lot. Don't get me wrong. But it's nowhere near what God could really do. The Lord is so powerful, brothers and sisters. He can allow it to be a small hole in your roof this big and let it rain. Three, four days straight. And that drop from that, that small little small area in your roof, that, that little drop come in and it hit that sheet rock and it hit that wood. And it just thump, 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 thump. And before you know it, that wood start to deteriorate. And that sheet rock start to cave in. And before you know it, you come home one day after work and your whole roof is done fell in on your television. Or your whole roof done fell in on an electrical uh, power power protect what they call power surge, surge protector, and all kind of water done fell into into that, and it done caused a fire. God, man, he he can really destroy our lives. He can allow you be riding down these bad, terrible streets in Jackson or wherever you at, and allow this small little small little piece of a glass just get into your tire. And you ride on it for months. Nothing wrong. You don't see ain't nothing wrong. And then one day he say, you know what? T glass sink in further. And that glass sink in further. And your tire blow and you go flipping. God, the most high, he, he meditates here. He sit back. I ain't going to kill him like this. I'm going to kill him like this. We got to be scared of a God like that. We can't play with God. People say, well, fear isn't love. You, you a lie? <laughs> fear is love. Hey, I love you. That's why I fear you. I, don't, I love you enough to fear you. I know how you get down. Let me fall in line. That's what a fear of your, 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 your daughter's 
or your or your children, they love you, you fathers, but they also fear you. That's why they love you so much. Because you can like like a father, you can be compassionate and embrace them. But when it's time to get real, it's time to get real. And they know that. Like, yeah, daddy love me. He'll take me places. He'll do things with me. But when daddy pull out that belt or when daddy look at me a certain way, I already know what time it is. Let me get right. That's how we got to be with our father in heaven. When he give us that, when you read these scriptures, he put it on your spirit to read certain scriptures, certain classes come out. Best you better get it. Best to get right. You best to get right. All of us better get right. Matthew 24 and 6. I'm about to be done. Matthew 24, verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Mm. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Read that again. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's what we've been hearing. That's what we now seeing. Read. See that ye be not troubled. But the Lord gives us an instruction. He said, you that fear my name, don't be troubled because you know why I'm, why I'm doing this. This me behind this. Tremble at God's word. Don't tremble at what the nation's got going on to cause and fear in you and make you leave the truth. Don't do that. Fear the, God, fear the Lord. Read again. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. All these things have to happen, y'all, but it's not the end yet. Yeah, we see this going on, but World War III ain't really fully popped off yet. Because the world ain't at war. It's Ukraine and Russia right now. Okay. The other nations are going to get involved eventually, I'm pretty sure. But the Bible says, do not be troubled because the end is not yet. There's still things that we have to go through. There's things that have to happen. Go ahead. For nation shall rise against nation mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. Read. And there shall be famines. Famines. And pestilences. Pestilences. And earthquakes mm -hmm. and diverse places. So the Bible says there are going to be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So hold your finger there. Go to Acts chapter 4. So what we need to be doing. If you tremble at his word, what do you need to be doing? Let's deal with a few solutions real quick. Uh, Acts chapter 4, let's read 34. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 34. Mm -hmm. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Read. For as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So, brothers and sisters, we have to stock our houses. This is why we gather collections, money, and we put stuff in our pantry so that you brothers and sisters can take advantage. I'm going to just be honest. A lot of brothers and sisters have not taken advantage. And your pantry at home may be great. And you may feel like, well, I don't want to take too much because I know it's other people in need. They ain't taking that either. You need to take something. Every single time we open up the pantry, which is weekly, every week we open the pantry, take you a little something. Take you a bag of five or six cans, whatever, however big your family is, so that you can be prepared for the famine. Believe God. Tremble at his word. He's serious. When he say a famine coming, a famine coming. And what's going to make the famine, what's going to make the famine increase? War. Because when war is happening, resources are not. Usually I saw, well, they banning things with Russia. They putting sanctions on Russia. So what did Russia say? I'm pulling away some of the food I send y'all. I'm pulling away some of this that I send y'all, some of that I send y'all. And then you go in the store and you realize every Russian product ain't on the shelf no more. Every product from China ain't on the shelf no more. Every product from Germany or wherever else, every BMW and, and, and Benz dealer shut down. Every Toyota shut down. Some of you got Toyota cars. And you say, okay, well, uh, uh, I need a part for my car. Oh, yeah, we ain't trading with them no more. You can't get no part for that car. Well, what am I supposed to do about my car? Pfft, you better go to the junkyard. That, like, it could get that bad. We don't know this. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just naming cars that are German or Chinese or Japanese engineered. But that could really happen. So the Lord says we're supposed to be gathering ourselves together, uh, gathering our resources together, and making distribution to every man according as he have need. If you got a big family, we're going to take care of you. If you got a small family, we still going to take care of you. Right? Go back to Matthew 24 and verse 7 again. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, 
and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Also, do not take for granted this COVID-19. Some of you may have got sick in a while. I think a couple weeks ago, we everybody was sick. Two, three weeks ago, a month ago, it was like December, I think. We had to close the school down. Everybody was sick. Everybody was going through it. But don't think just because you ain't had it or had no symptoms lately that it's over. Continue to eat right. Continue to drink your ginger, your turmeric. All these things that the Deacon ASAP drink, if you need the recipe, let us know. We'll post it on the Telegram. Wash your hands. Sanitize your hands. Wear your mask when you're in these public places. Man, these, some of these people may have the COVID that you're working around, and you don't know. But to protect you and your family, that's what you must do. Don't take it for granted. The Lord said there's going to be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Read. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Read. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You hear this? This is why the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. This is why the Bible tells us to gather together, look out for one another, love and cherish one another. Because there's going to come a day... Where it's going to be brothers and sisters among you that you loved, that you had, uh, you did a lot for, and they're going to turn on you. That's what the Bible says. This ain't me just, this is what the Bible says is going to happen. God says it's going to get so bad on this earth that people are going to turn on each other. People that was friends, that was, what did they say, Ace Boone Coon? They're going to show you they're a coon, all right? And they're going to run right back to the Christian church. I'm telling you, this is what the Bible says. Because we don't know what people are doing behind closed doors. We don't know why the Lord take the spirit from certain people. When you're in sin, you become fearful. Because God take the spirit from you. That's why it says, read it again, verse uh, 10. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Read. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold and because sin is going to be so great on this earth the love of many gonna wax cold you're gonna forget damn that's my brother in christ i gotta deal right with him when they come to business he owe i owe him money i gotta pay him on time you'll forget about that because your love gonna wax cold you understand the love gonna wax cold that's why we must walk in the spirit ephesians 4 Ephesians chapter 4. No, matter of fact, go to Philippians 2. We ain't read this in a while. Let's read that real quick. Philippians 2 and 1. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Those people that because of iniquity wax cold, that they love... They love shall uh what's it the, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound those that do that are not going to be in the same mind and in the same love and on one accord with you because your love is going to be well we got to keep this we got to keep the command we got to keep the sabbath we got things that we got to do we got to gather our funds together we got to put our food together hey i got to look out for uh uh brother such and such he out of town let me just ride past his house make sure his wife good you understand? Take my wife and kids with me. Hey, go and check on sis. Check on sis. Make sure sis all right. You know a Lord out of town. All these things going to have to happen in that day. It's going to get real. And as soon as you say, I ain't going outside, I'm staying to myself. It's, it's all about me. I'm. You ain't got that mindset. All these things we read and we're going to have to apply as it gets worse, brothers and sisters. Don't take it for granted. This is real. Keep reading. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. You know why he said let nothing be done through strife or vainglory? Because sometimes you do stuff because you want a congratulations. Or you want people to say how good of a person you are. But in that day, oh, that's going to be out the window. You ain't going to be worried about no congratulations because you trying, you and your family trying to eat. So you like, man, the hell with a congratulations. I ain't giving them nothing. I'm telling you. That's why he said don't do it through strife and vainglory. When you do things for people, do it in lowliness of mind, esteeming others better than yourself. Look, I need to take care of my brother. I got to look out for my sister. She need help. She hurt and she down. You got to look out for him. We have to look out for him. We cannot leave each other because the world go into chaos. Those that tremble at God's word, they going to fear turning their back on their people in the last day. No matter how bad it get, I cannot turn my back on my brothers. 
I cannot turn my back on the Lord. That's the mindset, brothers, this is going to be in that's fearing God's name, that fear of his word. But those that don't, they're not going to care at all. They're going to turn their back. Uh, can read? Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So don't look only on your own things and what benefits you. What about your brother? What about your neighbor? Don't he also or she also need help? The Lord always bless us with a little bit extra. And that little overhang that we have for our family, we able to help each other. That's even in the Passover. Remember what the scripture said, if the lamb too big for you, share it with the house next to you. Don't it say that in Exodus 12? Share the house. Share, okay, you, you got too much lamb. You're going to have to burn it at the end of the night anyway. Let's share it with this household. But you say, no, nah, I'm going to keep my lamb to myself to help them. What you, what, what, what you need? What you need? I mean, you know, it's Passover, man. We ain't had no money. We couldn't. Oh, okay. What's so long, brother? Damn. You cold with it. Bible said we can't be that way. The love of many going to wax cold in that day. Us that had a spirit and that tremble at God's word, we cannot have that spirit coming upon us. Ephesians 4 and 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Read again. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So the Bible said we're supposed to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We ain't got no time to argue. I ain't got no time to argue with you. I'm not going to fuss back and forth with you about nothing. I'm not going to hold no grudge and not speak to you at the Sabbath because I'm mad about something you said to me two months ago. You have to let that stuff go. That's still petty. You realize what's about to happen on this earth? It's war. And you up here arguing with a brother over some petty stuff. You understand? You, you, you mad at a sister... Over some pettiness. We ain't got time for that. This is the time that the true worship of God, worshipers of God that tremble at his word, gonna gather closer and closer and closer. And those that don't tremble at God's word, they're gonna separate themselves. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's on you. Hey, tsh, more power to you. Hey, whatever you got going on, you got going on. But those of us that tremble and fear the Lord, we're gonna do these unity events on Sundays. We're gonna come together on the Sabbath. We're going to come together on the new moons. We're going to enjoy each other. We're going to call and check on each other. I don't want nothing. I don't need nothing from you. I'm just checking on you. That's what we're going to do in these last days, those that fear the Lord. They're going to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Read two. I didn't read, I didn't read that. Verse two. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. For, forbearing one another in love. Go ahead. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit mm -hmm. and the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. There is one body, one body and one spirit. One spirit we're supposed e to be in. Go ahead. Even as you are called in, excuse me, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. The hope of our calling is to get the kingdom. Go ahead. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Go ahead. One God and one, Father. One God and Father. Of all, who is above all and through all. And in you all. Yeah, that, and in you all. That spirit supposed to be in us all, brothers and sisters. The love of many gonna wax cold. But we tremble at God's word. We understand, yo, I can't be caught up in no sin. I ain't got time to hold no word. I'm letting that go. Give me that. Get that law real quick in Leviticus 19. We'll shut it down after this. Leviticus 19. We'll finish Matthew 24 and 13, and then we'll, we'll finish it. Those that tremble at his word are gonna be thinking upon these things. Leviticus 19 and 16. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19. Verse 17, and, excuse me. And verse 17. No, matter of fact, it's something in 16. The Lord put on my spirit to say that. Let's see. It's verse. something in 16 I ain't read in a while. Look. Let's start at verse 11. Let's deal with God's commandments. Yeah. Those that tremble at his word. Start at 1. <laughs> Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. That's us. And say unto them. He shall be holy. You're going to be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Because I'm holy. So you got to roll like I roll. You understand? Go ahead. He shall fear every man his mother and his father. Oh, won't he do it? I knew it was a reason he wanted me to go to that script. I knew. I said, started one. It was something. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation. Read verse three again. For, he, these, for these little wicked kids that want to go against their parents. Read that again. He shall fear. Every man his mother and his father. Mm. And keep my Sabbath. Oh, wait. <laughs> Boy, that's the perfect precept. Write that down. 
You shall fear every man, his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. Because some of you little kids don't want to come to the Sabbath. I don't want to keep Sabbath no more. Oh, you don't want to keep Sabbath no more? Okay. Well, how are you going to fare when nuclear destruction come? Or when the Lord that says the earth is his footstool turn your world upside down? How are you going to do then? Because you didn't fear your mom and daddy. You thought they was playing. You didn't want to keep the Sabbath. You thought they was playing. Keep reading. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. You're going to do what I say. Go ahead. Turn ye not unto idols. Don't you turn to idols. Don't you turn to that drill rap music. Talking about guns and drugs and all that. Don't you take your friends off. <laughs> the Lord real. Don't you let no wicked family member influence you to go against your parents. The Lord real. Some of you think it's a game. Go ahead. Nor make to yourselves molten gods. Mm. I am the Lord your God. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Let's get down to 11. Verse 11. Go ahead. He shall not steal, neither deal falsely. Neither lie one to another. That's a, they, these are things that deal with the inner man. It says that ye shall not steal. Don't nobody know you, know you thinking about stealing. That's something that just come out of your mind and you do it. Neither deal falsely. Neither lead people on saying you're going to do something that you're not going to do. You're dealing falsely. You're not being honest. That's what it means. Uh, neither lie one to another. Don't be lying. Tell the truth. Be honest. Hey, I couldn't do it. I made a mistake. I couldn't do it. It's all right to tell them, hey, look, bro. I know I said I might be able to come, but something came up at work. I'm really not going to do it. Instead of telling somebody you're going to do something, you don't do it. Right? We all got to work on that. You got to be honest. Be a man or woman of your word. Right? Skip down to verse uh, 16. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So it says you shall not go up and down as a talebearer. Among thy people. You ever see somebody that gossip? You tell them one thing and they manipulate it and become a whole different story. It ain't what you told them. It was a game we used to play when we was a kid. Where you where one person would tell a message in somebody's ear. And by the time it got to the end of the classroom, they may tell you uh, green green tree leaves. But by the time it gets to the end, it's like um, yellow swimming trunks. You're like, yellow swimming trunks? That ain't what I... <laughs> what the heck? Because... People add stuff to story. People have a lying spirit. Some people can't just be honest. And some people, you tell them your business, and they tell the world, and they add a little salt to it. <laughs> that ain't what you told me. But I'm going to go up and down telling all your business, telling everybody business, being a talebearer. That's not what we are supposed to be. Go to Ezekiel 22 and 9 just to give a little bit more clarity on that because this is a law. We got to make sure we break the laws down. Ezekiel 22 verse 9. What is a talebearer? Bearing tales, lying. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 9. Yep. And thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. You hear that? That carry tales to shed blood. You're a liar. You adding stuff that was not said to you. Go ahead. Read and it from the top. And thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. Mm. And in thee they eat upon the mountains. In the midst of thee they, co they commit lewdness. And thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. And thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. So notice it says, in thee are men to carry tales to shed blood. They do things to lie and manipulate. Like I'll give you an example. Um, let's go to the book. Uh, let's go to Christ real quick, real quick, real quick. Let's go to Christ real quick. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter 20 and verse 20 regarding Christ. Luke 20, verse 20. Let's show you tell, bearer. The book of Luke, chapter 20, and verse 20. And they watched him and set forth spies, which should feign themselves, just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. You hear that? They was hoping to set him up by catching him in his words, meaning what? They were going to take something that he said and say, oh, he really mean this. Just like you got people that stitch leadership video up and say oh see he said get the vaccine oh see he said this yeah you negroes you're tail bearers you breaking the law you say you're a law keeper you're not a law keeper you're adding to the words you understand and that's evil as hell and that ultimately got christ killed talking about oh he said he he said he 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 uh more than caesar when he say that when did he say that he said give unto caesar what is caesar what you talking about but that's what they was doing to him read matthew 27 excuse me and verse uh, 15. Watch this. 
Matthew chapter 27 and verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a noble, uh, excuse me, a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you? So who you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ. Watch this. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He knew they were lying. That's what that means. He knew that they were lying. Go ahead. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? You better leave that Christ alone. Go ahead. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Because he afflicted me in my dream. Go ahead. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas, and destroy Jesus. Mm -hmm. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. Mm -hmm. And the governor said, Why? What evil have he done? What he do? Go ahead. But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing. Well, he saw evil. And hateful and wicked these Negroes was, and how much they hated Christ. Read. But that rather a tumult was made. And they already had their mind made up that they wanted him dead. Read. He took water mm. and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to do it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So notice it says, I want you to catch something. In verse 23, it says that the white man washed his hands of that just person. And the blood was on, and then it said, let the blood be upon us and our children. That was symbolic of them joining into the new covenant. Guess what that's always also showing you? The new covenant ain't for the white man. That's why the Lord had him wash his hands. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the way this Bible come together. All right. <laughs> but I'm showing you tail bearing. They were trying to catch Christ up in his words so that they ultimately could do this here and condemn him. And that's what they did. That's a tail bearer. Right. Now go back to the book of Leviticus, chapter 19. Let's finish it out. Verse 16 through 18. That's Levit what this law means. Go ahead. Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Mm. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. That's exactly what they did. Because the talebearing is, is set up to try to condemn somebody unjustly. That's what that talebearing that they was doing. That's why the Lord said, don't be no talebearer among your people. Lying, adding words to things that they said. Going up and down amongst the people, doing that to everybody. Manipulating conversations that you had secretly with other people. That's an evil thing. You had a conversation with me. We talking about, I don't know, anything. And you run back and tell somebody that I said something that I didn't say. And ultimately, they come and confront me about it. And I'm looking like, I never said that. You know, like a brother told me one day that uh, uh, some dudes had confronted him at his job about something, saying that he said something. And he was like, look, we can call the person. I never said that. And they were like, I know you said it. We ain't got to call nobody. Ain't nothing you can convince me. There ain't nothing that you can do to convince me that you did say it. What a justice in that. But that's the spirit on many of our brothers and sisters because we hate God's law. That's what I'm saying. That's why we're showing you these scriptures. That's why I said tremble at his word. Don't do this. Those that do this will be destroyed. That's unrighteous judgment. Go ahead. Verse 17. Thou shall not hate thy brother in thine heart. Because if you're a talebearer, you're a talebearer against your brother and you'll and you stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I mean, you will do whatever you can to get them killed like they did Christ because you have hatred in your heart. All these scriptures go together. God ain't just randomly just putting laws in the Bible. When he have it in context, a lot of times it go into the same thing. It's continuing on. If you lie to him, you hate him. If you steal from him, you hate him. If you don't listen to your mother and father, you hate him. You're not holy like God. If you turn to idols, you hate him. You understand? If you uh, defraud him of his land, of his, of his uh, wages, you hate him. The Bible says, if you let a stumbling block in front of him, you hate him. If you curse the deaf, you hate him. If you do unrighteousness and judgment, if you have respect to persons, you hate him. If you tell bear and lie on them, you hate him. That's what the Lord is showing. He said, don't hate your brother in your heart. Go ahead. 
Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor Breathe. and not suffer sin upon him. And if you see your brother or sister going off, why are you going to sit back and just watch them do it and then come and try to tell leadership, I seen such and such doing such and such. Why you didn't stop them? That's because there's hatred in your heart. You want to be able to go, oh, see, I knew he was going to do that. Let me tell leadership. Like, for instance, one time when we was at the old school, we had just got a school, bro. We didn't have a school for, you weren't there yet. We didn't have a school for, like, not even two months. This dude that had a spirit of envy and hatred on him, this Negro put, went to the complaint form and said that, or emailed leadership saying that we was getting drunk at the leadership table. Now, when you ever known us to get drunk at the leadership table? Never. He said we was up here pissy drunk, passed out. Shalom. Lying. We never did that. But he went to leadership and told us that. I told them that. Then he said, was no complaint for him in the bathroom. Deacon Lobos being the spiritual man he is, he's like, nigga, why you didn't put it? Why you didn't tell nobody? Why you run to us to say, yeah, they down here doing evil. They drinking at the leadership table. And guess what? Ain't even no complaint for him in the bathroom. Why would you say, hey, officer, the complaint form not up in the bathroom, which we took down because we was painting them bathrooms. When we first got to that old school, it was horrible. He didn't tell that. He just said that we never put them back up. That's some evil, man. That's that tail-bearing spirit because I got hatred in my heart for you. Read it again. Thou shall not hate thy brother in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. So the scripture said, obey them that had a rule over you. Leadership said they want to complain for him in the bathroom. Instead of him just saying, hey, look, brother, put that up. He didn't want to do that because he wanted to suffer sin upon us. He wanted us to be out of order so that he can look better. Sometimes people, I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it many years in this truth. Where brothers would down other brothers to make themselves look better. That's an evil spirit. If you're good at something, you're good at it and I'm not. There's plenty of stuff that these brothers are good at that I'm not good at. I don't claim to be. I can't do what they do. There's stuff in the body that these sisters are able to do that I can't do and maybe my rib but some of these other sisters in here can't do. So why not exhort her, hey, sis, show me how to sew like that. I can't sew for nothing. You understand? Show me how to cook like that, bro. I don't know how to cook no, what's the temperature? <laughs> What'd you put that on? You know I don't know nothing about no cooking. I'm going to burn up everything in here. But you know how to do it. So show me how to do it. That's humility. That's submitting yourself. But the Bible said when you want to suffer sin on your brother, it's because you hate him. You sit there and watch them be wrong, and you have hatred. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So the Bible said we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. We supposed If you don't want nobody lying on you, tail-bearing on you to get you in trouble or to get you condemned, why would you do that to them? These, those that tremble at the word of God, they're not going to do these things. They know it's war coming. They know we at the end of the world. So they're going to have their mind right because they fear what the Lord is saying. They fear the Bible. They fear the word of God. All right? So We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.